of this video is to show you exactly how to log your teacher identified professional learning on the NESA website. And you can see that I'm currently on the NESA website right now. And there's the web address up there in case you're wondering where it is. And you'll see over here on the right, there's a login icon. You click on that. And then you want to go straight to teacher accreditation, which happens to be the first link down. And that brings you to this page here, which allows you to enter your username and password. And of course, you hit login. And this will take you to this page here, which is the welcome page, the home page. And there's a number of icons down the side, which you can explore in your own time. I encourage you to check that your personal details are okay, etc., as well as your employment. But for this presentation or this video, we're interested in going straight to the teacher tab, which will allow you to bring up a page that looks like this. So it should look like this for you. Um, it should have proficient teacher ticked. And we're interested in this professional development tab here. Uh, down here you've got some information about higher levels so if that doesn't apply to you then you don't need to worry about that right now we're interested in this professional learning or professional development tab here so we click on that and it will take us to this page here and it allows us here to view add edit or evaluate our PD which is very important throughout the maintenance cycle so all you do is click on that and it will take you to this page here which I'll make a bit bigger for you and you can see that this provides a, a log of all of the professional learning that I've done over the past few years right back to 2013 and you can see that the dates listed and the name of the course the type of course whether it's teacher identified or whether it's a registered course it's listed there the type of activity the course level the duration so how long did the course or the professional learning last for? And over here, the status, whether it was approved or not, or whether validation or evaluation is still required. You can always go back and view your professional learning. So that's what it looks like. This is the, the professional learning that I've logged over the past uh, four years and actually keeps a log of everything right back to when you first start. So you can see right back to 2007 where I needed some evaluation but didn't get it. So um, there's a, a continuous log that's been kept. So it's very important that you continuously look, uh, log in here and add your professional learning as you go over the five years. So we're interested now in this Add New tab. Click on that. It will take you to this page here, which allows you to to add some new professional learning. So this is what you'll be doing over the five years pretty regularly to make up your 100 hours of professional learning. In particular, I'm talking about teacher identified in this video. So 50 hours of your 100 hours comes from teacher identified professional learning. So I'm gonna actually log some professional learning for you right now. So recently I completed a flip learning certification course which was not registered by NESA but it still was a a formal online course that I completed and I'll just enter the details now to show you how it's done so the title of the activity is flip learning certification level one that's what it was called it was a type of activity you've got a number of options here to pick so it was a course so you need to put the commencement date now I started this back in 2016 at the end and then I finished it on the 28th of the 1st 2017 so you can see that I've got to put the commence date and the end date the duration of the course was six hours and then I come to this part here where it says add standard so I need to actually go in and physically add the standards for my teacher identified professional learning now this you won't need to do for the NESA registered professional learning because the course provider will do it for you 
for your teacher identified, however, you need to go in and you need to add the standards. So it's important that you have a good understanding of the standards and that you know what they mean so that you can link them up with your learning. So for this particular course, um, it was a flipped learning course, so it really linked to standard two, know the content and how to teach it. So in particular, it was, it was about utilizing effective teaching strategies to integrate ICT. So the, the course had a lot of information about how to, how to use ICT to engage students and make the content relevant and meaningful, which is what flip learning is all about. So that was one standard. Uh, there were some few other standards that it satisfied. So I'm going to go down. You can see here you've got all the standards listed and you just need to go in and select the standards that are relevant for your professional learning. So I'm going to standard three now. I'm going to go down to standard or standard descriptor 3.3.2 because as a result of this course I developed my capacity to select and use relevant teaching strategies to develop knowledge skills etc. So that was that descriptor or that part of my teaching has been developed as a result of this course. So I'm also going to go down to standard five, the assessment and feedback section. So through this course, I was able to develop, select and use formal and informal diagnostic, formative and summative assessment strategies. So throughout this course, it had a whole section on assessment and how to create really meaningful, uh, informal, formative assessments using ICT and using other methods. So I was able to develop that a little during the course. And then, of course, Standard 6, which is all about engaging in professional learning. I most certainly satisfied 6.2.2, participating in learning to update knowledge of practice, uh, targeting professional needs and school and or system priorities. So you can see there I've matched my standards to my professional learning. So I do need a good understanding of the standards and the descriptors to be able to do that. So you need to investigate that. You need to familiarize yourself with the national standards and know what each standard descriptor means. So in here, you have to actually add a short explanation. So maximum 1,800 characters. And it really is just a brief explanation of how you've met the standards. It's important you do this well because um, when it comes time to write your report at the end of the five five year cycle, uh, you've got the information there which you can always go back and access. So specific examples of professional learning that you've done over the five years, try and make these explanations fairly specific so that you can go back to them again and draw them out when you're writing your report. So that's the advice I give you. You can see here I've written a little bit about the certification course, what it allowed me to do, and how it linked to those standards. So I've tried to make some links to the standards in my comment. Uh, you can see that I'm I'm talking a bit about assessment here and and critical thinking and using ICT, which were all part of those standards that I've identified. So you can see that's all fairly simple and easy. That's complete now. It hasn't taken me very long. I go down to hit save and it's there. So if you see, I now have 24th to 11th, 2016, the flip learning certification has been added. You can see over here it says validation needed. So basically, the school delegate, the person in charge of, of validating uh, a, a teacher's professional learning, needs to go in and have a look. Uh, see whether it actually matches the standards, see whether it's legitimate. The delegate at the school might actually come and talk to you and ask you a little bit about it, provide a little bit of evidence of your learning just so that it can be validated. So it's very important you keep some documentation, uh, keep some reflection, have some evidence to be able to show to prove that you've actually completed this learning. So that's how you enter uh, your teacher identified professional learning. Uh, I'll create another video very soon about how to evaluate your NESA registered professional learning, which is just a little bit different. It's actually easier, but it's just a little bit different. I currently don't have any to validate 
or to evaluate right now so I'll come back to that and so that video is on the way so hopefully you found this video helpful uh, if you have any questions please feel free uh, to come and, uh, and ask questions about this it's actually a very easy process and we're more than happy to answer your questions thank you very much for listening